Hypothesis are normal and hypothetics. Hypothetics means kind of interpretations. Some persons called messengers of God. 
and they were termed as Hermes. They used to exudate the messages of God. They would do. They were the messengers of God. After a long time, in 18th century AD, 19th century AD, in European English literary criticism, this term Hermetics was again introduced as the way, the method, the methodology, the pedagogy to interpret the biblical text or the ancient exegesis. Right? The simple definition of Hermetics implies in the sentence that how are we going to interpret an ancient text? And waiting for Bodo is not an ancient text. The chairs is not an ancient text. <coughs> Birthday party, happy days, these are not ancient texts. So how are we going to connect this subject hermeneutics with the theater of the absent? Absurdity is always in our life. From the pre-ancient past, before the ancient period, before the hermeneutics, before the messengers of God. I think before the God, when there was hour of God, as we found in this first line of Savitri by Sri Aurobindo. There were some hours of God. God was sleeping. I think absolutely was there at that time too. But the technical term or technically derived term absurd is first coined by by Albert Camus in 1955. These are simply knowledge, and I already told you that we speak. We tell whatever we already know. When we listen, we listen something new. But when we speak, we always speak of knowledge, of our past, of our time. How to approach these terms, which is in your course, in a new way, in a new perspective, in a fresh manner? This is the point. That's why I am here. I am going to help you to know the methods of exploration as Albert Camus tries to help their character how to die in dignity. It was purpose in all his ways. So I am not going to refer to any more Martin Eslin about the theater of the abstract. Seizes here all discussion about the productivity, <coughs> but we must go through some fundamental points. Like, Albert Camus was the first person after two massacres, after two world <coughs> after two world war, he coined this term technically and the text. In which the point is now absurd and who was with obsessiveness. So it starts the departure point of the of the absurd or absurd travels. With obsessiveness, Albert Kong and the term absurd. Massive massacre on this earth after the two world war and then the life seemed to be too tight, restless, full of anxiety, devoid of every hope, faith and all that. Then this term came into existence as absent. And when we go through deeply this particular book, Myth of Sisyphus, Kamu wrote this book 
in order to establish the deeper meanings of the term absent to help segregate it. Waiting for Guru first published in 1956 and this was 55, Kamu died in 1960. And specifically, Kamu wrote a sentence in this book Without God, absurd is sin. No need to interpret all the plays under the one umbrella of the of the absent from Samuel Beckett to Vaslav Havel. Samuel Beckett was the first person in this history and Vaslav Havel, spelling is B-A-C-L-A-B, H-A, B-E-L, Vaslav Havel, the actual pronunciation in Czech is Vaslav Havel. He was the president of Czech and Slovak. His last play or the last play in the theatre of the absurd is the exit and the last play by Beckett what where was dedicated to Vaslav Havel. This is short play, seven pages. <coughs> Albert Kamu wrote specifically that absurd without God is sin because all the literature from Tolstoy to Ulysses, James Joyce, from Graham Greene to Virginia Woolf, all literature you can, you can find is tormented in two terms, guilt and original sin of human bondage, the power and the glory, James Joyce, Ulysses, there are only two terms, all literature can be confined, guilt and original sin. And Kamu is writing, absurd without God is sin. That is to a metaphysical human person, a metaphysical soul. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. Cross purpose and this text. Myth of Sisyphus. These are the text outcome of this metaphysical mind inclined towards God. <coughs> not God from the ego, not God from Upanishad, Upanishadic term. We <coughs> didn't know what God is, but there is faith, not the Christian faith not the faith from Judaism, the faith, because one could discover after the two world war that the tears in the world are constant quantity. Lucky weeps and Pozo says this dialogue. Lucky stop weeping. That means if he is not weeping, that means another person anywhere else on this earth starts weeping. This is the key sensitivity in this play. Like in the mantra of danger, when the protagonist is going towards to help the life of the son of that Dr. Chatta. That is the sensitive point of the play, of the story, Mantra by Pinch. Similarly, this is the point in the Waiting for Godot. There is dialect, but not master's dialect. This is the confession that this earth is full of sorrow, pain. Nobody can overlook this, nobody can bypass this. Is there another word? And then we can find some terms from philosophy, Western philosophy, phenomenon and nominal. And before that, we should know that all the technical terms 
are <coughs> configured as limited and unlimited cells. When we term a dharma, your dharma is to attend class, is a limited sense. There is a dharma in this cosmos, dharma of nature. This is the unlimited sense. All technical terms, all technical terms, either hermetics or absinthe or dharma or rhythm, rhythm in your life, rhythm in this nature. When you find there is a rhythm in the nature that was not there within the world war, you will be more inclined towards this natural rhythmic process, the cosmic process. And then you will find the first responsibility of man is to maintain this rhythm. The first responsibility of man. This is unlike the Ocean written by Rabindranath Thakur, the crisis of man, the last prose written by Tagore. This is not like that. We have to maintain the rhythm of this nature by maintaining the rhythm in ourselves. Maybe there we can find some faculties are in dormance. When the challenges are before us, we explore our faculties, dormant, hidden. We can imagine there was a world on this earth, there was a society. Lives appeared automatically without any parental pause. We, we can imagine a story. There were some life, horses, camels, human beings, insects. They came together automatically. From food, from the food, we know this knowledge from the pressure that from the food life came into existence, and from life <coughs> the life force came, and from life force mind came, and from mind the ecstasy. These are the five stages of human consciousness. So at that time, when people were there on this earth, surrounded with rivers, mountains, oceans, trees, jungles, they got fear about the, when, we, they, when they encountered some dead bodies, they didn't know that this is there. And then the sense of insecurity, sense of fear, tremendous sense of fear appeared in them. And they started contemplating, thinking, because the thinking faculty was already there, was already there. Similarly, in this class, in this lecture, we can explore some dormant faculties already there in our mind, in our brain. Hermetic helps. Hermetics, the subject, the science, helps us to explore the dormant conditioning of there are some conditions in order to avoid the conditioning of mind, in order to deconditioning of the mind. And the first is we have to consider that we use all terms in two sense. First is time bomb and second is time bus. The very concept of time is also anomalous. Like when the first play in waiting for Bodo was written. The critics couldn't find any category which kind of play is this. British play, Greek play, Elizabethan era. Then the word came, anomalous. Anomalous means when you cannot decide the category. There was a master on the way he ordered to his disciple to have some water because he was thirsty and the disciple, the student walked along the entire village found a bird near a well attracted towards a beauty followed 
to following her towards her house, meeting with her father or her friend, gets married, offsprings, children, happy life. And suddenly he remembers his master's word and he runs, rushes for the pot and drinking water. Master was there under the tree and he says, I was waiting for it. This is the concept of time. Which time is real or it is my illusion? No faith, no hope. This is the concept of time. It is already there in the stories of Borges. You know about this? <coughs> in Latin American poet, George Louis Borges, this is the spelling, P O R G E S. In India, it is pronounced as Jorge Louis Borges. Some people, some writers say Borges. It is actually Borges. He rewrote all these stories from Yoga system and became famous. Great scholar, great poet. Like Rainer Maria Rilke. From this modern world. World of Marquis, world of Rilke, world of Borges. All stories <coughs> are with this anomaly. Are with this concept. The concept of time. Same <coughs> In Mahabharata, the story with Narada and Krishna, same story. Which time is real? A time where God is not interfering in the petty matters of human life, as Kamu referred to. God has no time to interfere in the petty matters of human life in the modern world. But there is still hope. There is faith. There is there must be a waiting. This is waiting not in restricted terms, not in limited terms. Like time. We have time for this class, 1 hour, 45 minutes, and there is time in cosmos. A timelessness. Similarly, dharma, a time, and dharma, the unrestricted terms. So, every terms can be interpreted in two sense, limited and unlimited. Similarly, waiting here is not in the limited sense of the term waiting. Here helps the science hermeneutics. Hermeneutics helps you how to interpret. But how to interpret? How means again the acquired knowledge? How means against the past, the time? How are we going to interpret a text? Does the dramatics or dramaturgy help in this case? Let us have a look. We have two dramaturgs. One is the poetics of Aristotle and another one is the Natishas by Bharati. You know Natishas? Natishas is created in 5th century BC in India. And now these scholars are saying that it is from 8th century BC, from the time of Padini. And the first play we found in Greece is from 6th century BC. Pythagoras is from 5th century BC. Buddha is from 6th century BC. It is very easy way to remember all those. Pythagoras, Buddha, Aristotle and Nagashastra. 6th century BC, 5th century BC. And the term, the term absurdity, the term avantar, this is not the Hindi translation of absurd, but there is a term in Sanskrit, avantar. Now we say avantar much. avantar ranika. Because people translated theatre absurdity like kuru jalunka much. <laughs> Very, not funny but ridiculous. Like we say, 
uh, he wrote address in the seminar and we translated it in India as Bij Bhakta that is foolish already word is already there Vishay Pravartan because he wrote address but it came from the western mind like musicology or pedagogy and we translate from English to Hindi overlooking our Indian heritage Vishay Pravartan Avantar Ranmaj Avantar Ranmaj it is in Hindi in Sanskrit Right? Black code, English term, and we translate it. It is published in books. Krishna Bibar. Another dictator. Andhra Gehavar is already there. It is used in Dharma, in parties, Andhra Yuga. This term, Hindi term. Already defined. So, Avantar was there in Natashasa. In term. In the 15th chapter, Chandu Vidhana Dhyaya. But actually means in unrestricted terms, in the sense of unlimited, timeless. That's why it is even uh, relevant today, not to trust. Similarly, the term absurd, the term waiting, the term tears, tears for me, for us, tears for the others. Two sense. First sense is my tears, my life, my image, my legacy, my and the other other species, legacy of the nature on this earth. How are we going to give something, to contribute something on this earth? This is the departure point of Albert Camus, Samuel Beckett, Julian Minesco, Albert Pinter, Vasrav. How are we going to save the earth? Depicted in the films of Tarkovsky, depicted in the films of Bergman, depicted in the films of Polish character, Christoph Christoph. So we have to go far east from Martin Asli and all that. So how are we going to explore the new vistas, the new cells? to interpret the theory of the accident. Is there any faculty within us in unlimited sense? Yes, there is the answer in derivative. This is called Pratibha. The English term for this is creative genius. It says we are ever creating dynamic force and nothing else. Not the body, not the mind, not the brain. But we are ever creative dynamic force. It is already there. How to overcome the fear from the primitive age, from the age of cave, we have overcome from Buddha to Ramkrishna Paramus. Even Rishi Tolstoy could overcome how to how to overcome, how to transcend, how to go beyond this fear of death. We have this faculty to explore after that, how to define death, how to define life, how to define love in unlimited sense, how to define rhythm, how to define waiting, how to define anxiety. When Heidegger says, anxiety causes everything. Everything is the outcome of your anxiety. Anxiety is the content of the consciousness. Jealousy, greed, hope, waiting, wanting to love, to be loved, hatred. These are the content of human consciousness, limited sense. Compassion, goodness, tears for others, unlimited sense. Are merged in your creative faculty, your creative genius, in Pratibha. Pratibha is not a three letters word or acronym, acronym word. We know acronym, synonyms, antonyms, and acronyms. Acronym means 
acrostic word means when the letters of the word explains the motion of the word already immanent in the word <coughs> like our language activity is immanent in our cognitive faculty these are the terms linguistics cognitive science neurocognitive science phenomenology epiphenomenology these are all under the one ambience of one umbrella of the term consciousness our language activity is immanent in the faculty of cognition we immediately verbalize what we cognize the gentleman appears oh yes mr sharma nobody is there as we cognize we verbalize in fact as we cognize anything as we don't cognize anything we not verbalize we don't verbalize interesting we cognize as we verbalize some people make it comprehensive after too many talks too many words after long paragraph he or she cognizes what he or she actually wants to do so we cognize as we verbalize so cognitive faculty and the linguistic faculty are immanent in our mind in the same faculty where lies your creative genius and that creative genius helps you to bring forth to burst forth the another fresh meaning of the same cliche words like absurdity or hyperbole Because of the accident because now albert camus has i pointed it out camus has cleared complicated in a very lucid manner that absurd without god is sin so we are not going to commit any more sin by letting him with the existentialism right now He is calm, is free. Creator of the, of the absurd is free, and we are free to interpret in in a foolish way or in a genius way, right? Now it's up to you. How are you going to interpret the words, the sentences written, embedded in the text? Is it clear? because in our communication studies there is a yes, um, formula or model of communication that what should not give so many knowledge in one class <laughs> otherwise the mind is <coughs> mind becomes a button we have some pivotal points pivotal terms now we have some pivotal terms first we have to do beyond the primitive knowledge primitive knowledge means our knowledge is primitive our brain is evolved through millennia so our brain is primitive that's why it behaves like a barbaric film even today so many massacres in delhi and all over the world it is still happening because of our barbaric attitude so our mind is primitive our brain is primitive it is evolved materially but our mind is not yet evolved not full of compassion not full of tears in the beget sense not we have the tears in the sense of anesco from the tears when the old person speaks the truth points that the listener is deaf this is the crux of the chairs when the old man 
not the old man and the sea from Hemingway. There are another ways, right way, the wrong way, the Hemingway, another way. <laughs> when the old man tells the truth in the ear of the fellow, he finds that person was dead. So one cannot speak, one cannot utter, one cannot pronounce the deepest, the innermost sense of truth, the innermost sense of love, the innermost sense of pain, one cannot speak. At the same time, one cannot listen to the deepest feeling of pain, the deepest feeling deepest feeling of both cannot listen, one cannot speak because both are integrated together in our cognitive faculty, in our language faculty. This is after the postmodern interpretation of the chairs. So the critics, they already analyzed, we have so many books you can find so many interpretations from Google but how are you going to look at the text with a fresh attitude? <coughs> now my question is, is it possible to look at a text without any past, without any knowledge, without any attitude, without any content of consciousness? Is it possible? to have a consciousness bereft of thought, bereft of emotional thought, we must have this consciousness having two senses. First is chronological memory and another one is emotional memory, psychological memory. They go together. If you have to come from your hostel, from your room to this seminar room, 